Welcome to the Pharma Podcast, conversations with industry experts and business leaders about important and current topics in pharma, biotech, and medtech. I'm your host, Sam Tarantino. On this episode of the Pharma Podcast, I have an extra special guest. Artem Perchenko is CEO at Platforce, a company based in Ukraine that he continues to run in spite of all the adversity he is facing during a time of war. I'm sure you will find this interview not just informative, but also inspirational. Welcome to the Formal Podcast, Artem. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on the podcast today. So, Artem, uh, tell us, uh, tell us uh, about yourself, Platforms, um, how it got started. How are things going? <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a war in Ukraine, so um, we, we are forced to, like, um, develop the company in, in uh, like, in, in adversity, yeah? Uh, so, like, we, we, we do what we, we can, yeah? Uh, it's not, uh, like, uh, we cannot affect that uh, situation, uh, uh, we just do, do what we can. We, we uh, moved our uh, team to the safer part of uh, of the country. Uh, we like supported our team with relocation to another country if needed. Yeah, so like, something like that. Uh, it's just a business. Uh, we are working as uh, like you do in Canada or in in any other countries. It just looks uh, that that's it's like unreal, yeah, to work there <laughs> here in Ukraine. Yeah. Well, t so tell us about Platforms. Yeah, Platforms. It's a, a pharma tech company <clears throat> providing efficient and easy to use solutions aimed at empowering pharmaceutical and life science companies uh, in their interactions with uh, doctors, HCPs, whether remotely or in person. Uh, our main product is Pharma CRM uh, with closed loop marketing and analytical capabilities. Uh, we have an uh, ambitious vision to like uh, become a first choice for CRM for pharma and life science in emerging and developing markets. Uh, like we see ourselves as a viable alternative to giants like Viva and like Cuvia. Okay, and so tell us how did it how did it get started? <laughs> uh, that's an interesting story. Uh, like uh, when, when the war started, uh, uh, my previous uh, company, uh, uh, where I worked before that. Uh, uh, it was focused entirely on the on the mar Ukrainian market, and uh, the business model was highly sensitive uh, to such upheavals like we have. And uh, at that moment, uh, I met with my friend who worked uh, works in, uh, with global companies, and together we identified uh, a gap in in the glo uh, global pharma market, uh, pharma uh, and life science market. Uh, for a customizable, affordable CRM tailored to the industry-specific needs. So uh, from that moment, uh, uh, we sought out an investor and began to build our team. That's the story. <laughs> so how, how did the war impact your decision to, to start a business and, and, and continue to run the business? Uh, actually, uh, directly, uh, because uh, I, I, before before the war, I worked in an, uh, in another company, yeah, and uh, mm, war affected it a lot, yeah, dramatically. Uh, uh, it was changed my life dramatically, yeah. Uh, so, and at that moment, uh, I was. Uh, like more open for any other like new ideas opportunities uh, that uh, like yeah that i can find so that meeting uh, w w with my friend and we uh, discussed this uh, like opportunity that uh, we can really uh, compete with, with the giants on a global market and th that idea uh, inspired me a lot so yeah.
So what were some of the challenges you faced when, uh, when starting uh, Platforms and, you know, uh, during a war and, and how, how did you overcome them? Uh, the war created a volatile economic climate, which made it difficult to secure funding and plan. Uh, so we mitigated by uh, this by uh, seeking uh, out an investor who shared uh, our long-term vision and uh, understood the potential of our business model. Yeah. Uh, so a another challenge uh, was ensuring the safety and well-being of uh, our team members. Uh, we've made necessary arrangements uh, for those who needed to relocate to safer parts yes, uh, of, of Ukraine. And as I mentioned, yeah, even to other countries who supported our employees also. Uh, also, like the ongoing war in Ukraine has made it a bit difficult to convince customers that the war will not impact their operations. Yeah, so we've had uh, to work harder to build trust and demonstrate the resilience and reliability of our business, uh, despite the challenging environment that we, we have. So, and I think the, the next one was uh, as a solution, as a challenge, um, expand, uh, like expanding our team internationally. Yeah? Uh, that was new experience for me. So here I consulted with friends who had this experience before. Uh, like we have, uh, overcame it by adapting hiring processes, leveraging like digital communication and uh, collaboration tools, like providing remote work infrastructure, etc. Like this, uh, through these measures, we build a strong and diverse team uh, for the moment. Yeah, that bolstered our ability to serve the global market. Yeah, now, is it fair to say you mentioned uh, you relocated your staff, um, I believe yourself, but uh, you're, you're prevented from leaving the country. You, uh, you have to stay in Ukraine. Yeah, I'm originally correct? from Ukraine and like I, I live in Ukraine with my family, wife and three-year-old daughter. Uh, so uh, like we, we moved from our home city, Kiev, to the western part of Ukraine and now I live in Urgorod. Um, like the whole team, like our team work remotely and like our teammates are located all around the globe in like countries such as Argentina, the USA, Cyprus, Hungary, Egypt, the Philippines, Romania, Azerbaijan, and of course, Ukraine. Like, uh, and we have uh, laws, local laws that uh, uh, men who who who, who um, might serve, yeah, they they do not have an opportunity to to go out of the country. So yes, uh, uh, I cannot go out of the country, but um, now I'm negotiating with the government that uh, like we have a business, uh, we have uh, some international meetings, conferences that I like need uh, need to go there. So I hope I, uh, I will get that permission <laughs> so I will be able to go out of the country. Yeah, I mean, speaking anecdotally, just to, my kids um, have friends um, and a few are, are, are refugees, uh, immigrants from, from Ukraine. And um, I know with one of my daughter's friends, uh, her father remains back in, in the Ukraine. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, my my uh, sister moved to Canada. Uh, I think last summer. Yeah, because 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 of war. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's uh, quite a few. Yeah, there is uh, there's a, a, quite an effort here, at least locally where I live, uh, uh, to help resettle. Um, uh, Ukrainian uh, fleeing the war. Um, all right, uh, so let's let's talk about um, you know strategies. Can you you know describe the strategies you've, you've used and and uh, um, to adapt to the the changing economic and and political climate? Uh, yes, uh, first, uh, like we fo uh, we focused on expanding our team internationally, uh, which enables us to tap into diverse perspective uh, like and experiences and uh, also it, it helped us to 
um, decrease this tension yeah, from, from the customers, potential customers also, uh, who think that uh, it might affect their like business also uh, like a, a cooperation with us can affect uh, their operation so uh, because of that we started expanding our team internationally like that's first uh, second one uh, we utilize digital communication and collaboration tools to like bridge any geographical gaps enabling seamless uh, teamwork and efficient decision making and um, <laughs> like for, for for example, yeah, uh, we work uh, remotely, uh, like in different countries, uh, and uh, one one of the tool, yeah, to to like track efficiency of our employees, uh, uh, we, we use uh, uh, Jira, yeah, where people uh, need to track their time, uh, like allocate their time to, to the specific tasks that that uh, created in, in our project so it it looks like that <laughs> yeah uh, in our case uh, it's impossible to to work uh, in a different way uh, third one we proactively adjusted our business uh, continuity plan considering potential risks and uh, like challenging challenges arising from the situation uh, I, I think uh, like the strategies com combined help us to maintain like trust with our clients, adapt to the to the changing landscape, so and continue delivering high quality products and services. So, yep. <laughs> did you uh, did you have to make any difficult decisions in in order to keep the business afloat? Uh, fortunately, at Platforms, I didn't. Uh, but uh, during my previous experience, yes, a lot. Uh, as I mentioned, that that previous company that I was uh, that I mentioned before, uh, uh, it was really sensitive to such events uh, as ongoing war or lockdowns, re uh, like related to COVID-19. Yeah. So yes, at, at that time, I had to be really creative to save the business. <laughs> Uh, for example, uh, after the war uh, started, the sales dropped uh, like to zero by 100 percent. Uh, so I, I was forced to put it on hold for two months and then uh, relaunched uh, the company, uh, rebuilt the structure, adapted it to the like current situation. And uh, now... Uh, it shows a confident, positive trend. Uh, yeah, even better than than in the best scenario I planned before the, that relaunch. So, like as I know, that company is still in the game, even though neither investor nor the government helped us at that time. Yeah, but I'm no longer the part of that uh, of that company. So yeah, but I had that experience. I can share it with you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so uh, on the government, uh, what role did your you know your community uh and your local government uh play in in supporting your business? Uh, the role of the community and local government in supporting our business has been quite limited. Let's say it this this way. <laughs> like we realize that our government is focused on, on the victory and all efforts aimed at achieving this goal, yeah. Uh in the meantime, uh, we've always appreciated the resilience and unity shown by Ukrainian people during these challenging times. So our community support and encourage uh, have been invaluable in keeping us motivated and focused on our mission. Like we believe that our resilience and determination uh, will continue to drive our success regardless of the level uh, of external support we receive at the company so and we operate this way that no one helps us <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 um uh, how has your business um you know how has it evolved now how you know since the war started how how are you evolving we focused on global market, not local ukrainian market, so for us it was easier as uh for example, for a lot of 
Ukrainian companies that uh, focus on Ukrainian market. So I think that uh, the only change, like really big change that that we uh, that we has during this war, it's expanding our team globally. Yeah. Uh, all other things seem to be usual for us. We live in Ukraine and. Uh, it is not the first upheaval uh, uh, we have had in, in our country. So resilience is in our blood, I would say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, you know, we're we're approaching the near the end um, of our uh, our time. Um, what advice would you give to you know other entrepreneurs who are trying to start a business, start and run a business in, in difficult circumstances? My, my advice would be embrace challenges and opportunities for growth and never underestimate the power of positive attitude to help you navigate through adversity. That's like the main advice I could give you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so finally, uh, you know, what what lessons did you learn from your experience, and and how have they shaped your approach to business and, and uh, life in general? Okay, uh, I learned the importance of staying resilient in the face of adversity and being adaptable to the ch uh, to change. Um, th this. Uh, has helped me to navigate tough situation and find creative solution to overcome challenges in both my personal and professional life also. Um, I realized that the well-being of myself and my team is essential for success, like taking, my, uh, taking care of ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, like enables us to perform at our best and face challenges with confidence. Yeah. Um, I learned to focus on long-term goals, uh, not get bogged down with the short-term setbacks. Uh, this uh, has helped me to better, um, like strategic, uh, to, to make better strategic decisions and stay on track uh, even during difficult times. Um, I also discovered that building a strong, diverse team and fostering a collaborative environment in, is critical for achieving success. Encouraging open communication, uh, mutual support and shared learning has enabled us to tackle challenges together and uh, emerge stronger. Um, and finally, finally, I learned the importance of staying optimistic and maintaining a positive attitude even in the face of adversity. Yeah? This has helped me to stay motivated and inspire my team uh, keep pushing forward. Any final thoughts you want to share with, uh, with the audience? Yeah, I would like to um, remind the audience that no matter how challenging the circumstances may be, there is always an opportunity to, to learn, grow, and make difference. Yeah? Embrace change, stay true to your values, and never lose sight of the impact uh, you can create. Surround yourself with supportive people who share your vision and remember that perseverance, determination, and positive mindset can lead to incredible achievements. Lastly, always be open to learning and growing from both your success and failures. They will ultimately shape you into a stronger and more resilient entrepreneur. Well, Artem, uh, thank you for being a guest on the Pharma Podcast and sharing your story. Uh, how can our listeners connect with you? Uh, they can connect me on LinkedIn. Uh, and I think using my email. Okay. Well, contact details for Artem uh, will be made available on our website at the pharmapodcast.ca. Uh, thank you for listening. The Pharma Podcast is available to listen to for free on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and on our website at thepharmapodcast.ca. We are also available on YouTube. 
please subscribe and follow me on LinkedIn to stay up to date on future podcasts. If you would like to be a guest on this podcast, or if there is a topic we should cover in future episodes, please connect with me via LinkedIn.